The most controversial enforcement change recently implemented by the Harper government is mandatory minimum sentences, a policy that was one of the primary catalysts for the US's massive prison population. Mandatory minimums do not merely target violent criminals or major drug traffickers. Every year in the US, mandatory minimums result in the lengthy incarceration of thousands of low-level offenders who could be given shorter sentences at an annual savings of several hundred million dollars. Based on events in the US and other nations, mandatory minimums in Canada will likely increase prosecution and incarceration costs, leaving less money for rehabilitation programs, continue to cause overcrowding in prisons, remove judges' discretion, forcing them to apply blanket sentences regardless of circumstances, limit the use of alternate sentencing measures applied to Aboriginal offenders, disproportionately punish small-time drug offenders while having a limited effect on drug producers, organized crime bosses, and large-scale traffickers, harshly punish young offenders, stigmatizing them for life, continue to disproportionately affect blacks and aboriginals, lead to more trials and parole hearings, and turn non-violent offenders into violent or repeat criminals. In addition, mandatory minimums violate provisions of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and will cost Canadian taxpayers millions of additional dollars per year. American advocacy group made up of police officers, judges, and policy advisors are advising the Harper government to not pass Bill C-10 legislation that includes mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenses. Joining us now in Washington is Eric Sterling, spokesman for the Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Eric, your group is advocating that the Conservative government in this country not enact this uh, new crime legislation. You cite problems that happen in the U.S. as a result. Uh, what kind of issues did you have in the states with this zero-tolerance approach? Until 2005, Texas had the highest rate of incarceration in the world, with fully one in 20 of all its residents locked up. In the 1990s, when these scenes were shot by the CBC, Texas prisons filled to bursting. Most prisoners didn't even have cells, just a cubicle and a bunkhouse crammed with 30 men at a time. And yet the crime statistics were worse than those in other states. But then things changed. Ever since 2005, things have changed so much that every week at the courthouse in Dallas, you can see a Texas judge hugging criminals, even giving them medals for graduating from drug treatment. The judge says the old ways just didn't work. We spent a lot of money, billions of dollars building prisons and housing prisoners and it didn't get us anywhere. You fund treatment and you fund aftercare and you fund programs that will deal with that on a long-term basis that you avoid sending thousands of people to prison. It and sounds it, expensive. Uh, it's less expensive. Uh, Tell we've me about got, that. Well, we have data. Uh, this program that we run here, for example, uh, we had a university do a cost-benefit analysis. When every dollar we spend is $9.34 in avoided criminal justice costs. Other studies agree that putting someone in drug treatment costs about one-tenth of what it costs to put them in prison. Well, the first thing you learn in a Texas courtroom is that the popular image of tough Texas justice is out of date. Yes, for years they built more prisons and they stuffed them full. But then they got the bill. And Texas, yes, even Texas, reversed course. What they did was put fewer people in jail. Over five years, the rate of incarceration dropped by 9%. At the same time, the FBI says the crime rate dropped by nearly 13%. And they did that by spending on treatment instead. In the United States, even medical marijuana growers have faced sentences of 85 years under the mandatory drug sentencing laws. In the past, the American Legislative Exchange Council was a driving force behind tougher sentences in the U.S. But on August 5th of this year, the conservative corporate-backed group adopted legislation that would reduce compulsory minimum sentences for a range of drug and other crimes. An increasing number of judges, prosecutors, and others are criticizing mandatory minimums, including Attorney General Eric Holder, who called for sweeping, systematic changes to the American judicial system on August 12th, urging a frank and constructive dialogue about the need to reform a broken system. He even labeled mandatory minimums draconian and asked Congress to reform a system which can breed disrespect for itself. He also said mandatory minimums have resulted in unduly harsh sentences and disparities that do not reflect our principles of federal 
federal prosecution. Long sentences for low-level nonviolent drug offenses do not promote public safety, deterrence, and rehabilitation.